I think two jumpers is the way forward. Now I'm going to do something very innovative and different and film my breakfast smoothie. Now, I've never filmed this before, so prepare to be impressed. My hair is crazy today. Oh dear. All right, I'm just, as ever, editing. There I am. Hair's the same as yesterday. Pizza round two. Mmm. Even better today than yesterday. Okay, so, um, we are finishing off the questions because Yesterday I asked them and then we immediately filmed, so loads came in after mm. the fact. So on, most people were messaged on Instagram, so... Nonstop Paris. Hello Cheryl. Go subscribe to her, she's awesome. She asks, why did you choose to live in Brighton? Wait, we answered this. We answered this one. We've already answered this in yesterday's video, but everyone go subscribe to her. We'll link her in the description below. Oh my gosh, I have hair in my face, Alex. <sighs> Alex! Seriously. Maddie right. brushed her hair for the first time in like months. Alex, I've brushed my hair. <laughs> I just don't use that brush. Okay, snivelling idiot. What is it like? Wait, is that a Harry Potter quote? I don't know. I feel like I recognise it as well. Mm. What is it like slash is it hard travelling as a non as an English speaker in non English speaking countries? No, I thought it'd be harder than it was, at least where we travelled. Like when I landed in Thailand. I think I was so like, you're so preoccupied with everything else. You suddenly land in Thailand and you think, oh, wait, mm. I don't know anything about this language or like, because like, it's a completely different alphabet as well. But Everyone spoke English enough yeah. for us to get by and um, where we stayed, it is very tourist friendly. So um, we didn't struggle at all really. Yeah. And because we met lots of people there who had traveled from America, Australia and England who spoke English. Yeah. That made it a lot easier, so. Yeah. Also for Alex, what was your journey to veganism slash did you feel like any sort of pressure to become one? We kind of touched on this yesterday. Well, we answered the vegan journey, didn't we? Yeah, did um, you feel any pressure? Because of Any me? pressure, no, no. When I, tell peop when, I, when I told people that I was vegan, I imagine that some people probably thought it's because you were vegan and I just did it because you were I told you telling to. me to. But it wasn't really like that at all. You were pretty um, relaxed about it. Like there's something, yeah. Like, yeah, pretty much. Sometimes you'd be like, don't buy that cheese. You don't need that much cheese. You were always really respectful. You always um, ate the food that I cooked you. You didn't ever like blazingly throw it in my face and you're always on board with the yeah. ideas of if it. I'm getting, and you... If I'm getting cooked food for free, I'm not gonna like complain. And when I went vegan, you totally understood it and you were like, I wanna do that one day. So it was never really Yeah, I think I, I always knew I was probably gonna do it. I just, at the time. I knew that deep yeah. down. Holly Rose 105, hi, hello. Hey, love you guys. Love to know what are both of yours favorite color and where did you get your inspiration for your apartment color scheme and aesthetic? My favorite color is pale pink. You know, I don't really have a favorite color. It used to be green at school because I was in greenhouse. But you had to wear green for sports. Say green uh, then. Yeah, let's just go with green. And Why the not? aesthetic of our house, uh, I don't think Alex really cares about that type of thing. Nope. But um, I like neutral colours, same with my wardrobe, but so... I will say, neutral colours in general are good. We've always this just... Nice I thing. haven't really sat, sat down and thought, Ooh, what, what, what do I want the house to look like? I've just kind of bought things I like and it tends to be neutral, so... If I, I do want some pale pink cushions for the sofa though, but that's about it as far as I'm going to go with colour schemes. I like grey and I like white. And I like natural um, materials, so... Good question. I like that question. <laughs> Matty Mickner says, iPad or MacBook? 100% MacBook. I don't have an iPad and I don't really see the need for it for me. I can't really answer because I've never had either. <laughs> right. Ida XX, what do you think about tattoos? Would you get one? We've discussed this quite a few times in the past. Mm. I think because a few of our friends, like every year, like a new friend gets a tattoo, mm -hmm. it seems. Um, I really think tattoos are super cool on other people. Like, I think they're really cool. One of my best friends just got mm. a tattoo on her arm. It looked amazing. But I don't personally ever see myself getting a tattoo. They're just not really something I've ever wanted. I'd always kind of thought I might get one. Mm. 
Alex um, was talking about getting a Harry Potter one. I remember there was a girl in Made in Chelsea who had, I can't remember what she had, like a, it must have been on her arm or shoulder, she had a pair of glasses and a lightning bolt scar. And I always liked the Deathly Hallows thing. Too like many people have triangle. that. Triangle. Yeah. I mean, I probably will never get one, but I'm open to the idea. Or maybe like barbed wire around my neck. <laughs> Karina Asvang, what is the most challenging part about moving in with your boyfriend, girlfriend? Loving your vlogs, by the way. They're so nice and calming to watch. Ah, oh, glad you're enjoying them. Um, I think the most challenging thing is getting, um, for us anyway, having equal amounts of responsibility with things that you have to get done. So like when you move in, you have loads of things like you have to put furniture up, you have to sort out your bills, you have to sort out your money, and it's quite difficult to navigate who does what and who's responsible for what. Yeah. And that, that was, well, I has, it, has frustrated me a little bit sometimes. I find it hard trying to balance filming and editing. With yeah. Company. Like filming especially, it's tricky. It, it takes up a lot of time. Yeah. And it was difficult to Because Alex has been filming a lot more and he's also newer to it. Yeah. He, he's been working more, so I've ended up having to do other things more and then I'm like why am I putting the bed up by myself <laughs> but actually because I drove all the way to pick it up yeah to be fair it's, it's mostly in my head because you figure it out and it's just yeah it's just mostly like moving stress just ends up making you be like oh got so much to do and we both have equal amounts of things to do yeah it's just I, th I think it's just generally difficult but we've lived together pretty much uh for we <laughs> We've lived together in the previous place we lived in, but we were obviously living kind of with my parents in a house attached to their yeah. house. And then before that, we were at uni together. So we've, we've been in each other's kind of living situation for a very long time. Stuck so it's together not really for new. a while. Yeah. yeah. Caper Ale... Wait, well, how do you say this? Caper Alamandine. I don't know, I don't know. sorry. I can't, I can't hey, put words in it. What's your favourite vegan snacks? Sweet or salty? You really are an inspiration for me. Love from France. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's French. Um, oh, right, okay. My favourite <laughs> vegan snack is definitely popcorn, salted popcorn. It's a bit of a problem for me. And crisps. Um, so definitely salty. Crisps. Yeah, crisps are bad. I think and, crisps are yours. And good. And yeah, but... Well, you like sweets too. I also like things like Mentos and any kind of vegan sweet you can get, to be honest. Okay, Crystal91883. Since you guys live and work together, what do you do when, you get on, when you're getting on each other's nerves? <laughs> when we, it is difficult because we are working together, we've just moved in together, it's kind of like a stressful time, you've got to think about money, you've got to think about responsibility. So it can get difficult, but honestly, the only thing that you can do is talk to each other, and that's what we have to do. We might get snappy with each other about something that's upset us, or um, be getting on each other's nerves, and the thing that I find important to do is number one is to have your own space and to like go for a walk or get out and I, I like to do that or you like yeah. to do that and then just talk about it because sometimes in the moment it can seem a lot worse and then you have a chat and it's actually not what you what you thought if someone's done something that's got on your nerves like if Alex has done something that's got on my nerves I might get angry in the t at the time but then I'll talk to you about it and then I'm like oh okay like I understand more now if that yeah. makes sense I'd say the same thing it's good to talk about it instead of leaving it. But yeah, sometimes you need space. I think so space it's, it's, is important. It's good to get out of the house. Yeah. That really helps when it comes to... And it has been difficult because yeah. we've just moved in and there is a lot to do. So we have been neglecting that. And we actually had a conversation today about how we really need to prioritise yeah. um, getting outside and having like a healthy morning routine and having to-do lists. Yeah. And Because the thing I found is we, we sit down immediately because, you know, we you have to go one room over and you're sort of in your office technically yeah then you start working and then by the time you're done it's because of the time of year it's dark out yeah so you think well i don't want to go out now yeah and it, it's if you fall into that trap then you start getting very kind of antsy yeah you're stuck inside all day so we're going to prioritize that from now um especially with vlogmas coming up there's gonna be a lot of work to do so um we're gonna be this, prioritizing uh... getting outside and having our own space and having that time to ourselves to do our own thing because everything else crosses over so much. This will be the last video before Vlogmas. <gasps> yes. I just realised we were discussing today. Oh my gosh, today. how exciting. Oh dear. Dystopian Overture. You got that one. Yo, I got a question for you each. Alex views on the Elder Scrolls games. I know you love Fallout. <sighs> I'm sorry to say that I've only ever played Skyrim. Oh, I loved Skyrim and so much. We played that at uni together and I, I was yeah. obsessed with it. That, when was that? The year, year after it came out, five years ago, we played it. 
just non-stop there was like a month in the summer where we played it pretty much non-stop mm -hmm. and it was kind of as soon as you get home from work you'd play it i'd wake up early to play it which i've never yeah. done with a video game before i used um, to go to work because i worked really early in the mornings at a hotel waitressing and cleaning and i'd go there at like six in the morning and finish at like nine ten o'clock come back and just immediately play skyrim my flatmate used to play oblivion which is the one before skyrim but i, I don't know i think because i got into it with skyrim and then it's very difficult to go back in terms of like graphics mm. so I ne i've never played the other ones unfortunately i'm sure i will one day i'm pretty sure i've got morrowind and oblivion downloaded on my laptop but I've never played it because I just play Fallout all the time. Maddie, in the vegan movement, the idea of pets is quite controversial. I know your family has lots of animals as pets, but what's your stance on the whole thing? Mm. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with having pets, and I think it's a little bit... I don't know, I, I wouldn't necessarily think it's... I don't agree with people who say that there's something wrong with having pets as a vegan. I think that as long as you adopt your pets, then... Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't see why not. You know, obviously pets that are, should be pets, like pets that have been domesticated, so like cats and dogs. And there is obviously, I think you've got to be careful about having other types of pets. Like bunnies, you've got to be careful whether you can have a bunny rabbit and mm. like chickens, like. But I think if you're adopting an animal that is in need, then it's only doing a good thing and they only bring so much happiness to your life and like my pets bring so much happiness to my life and I fully intend, we fully intend on getting pets. In the future, yeah, a dog and I a just, cat. Well, I just, well, I don't know what type of pet to be honest. Cat and a dog. It depends. Well, it depends where you live. I you think that any... the only pets that I disagree with are pets like fish and um, birds, birds and reptiles and that type of thing. I really, I mean, I'm not saying if you have those pets and you love them, I'm not saying that's like I'm um, like against you or whatever. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion on it but i personally would feel uncomfortable having a fish or a reptile or a some that type of animal just because i feel like they should be free i don't know i'd feel guilty about it but it's not something i've really looked into so i'm, I'm not saying that to offend anybody right we've got to hurry this up now oh battery's flashing yeah okay next question from seth arden where did alex work before you two moved much love from canada i worked in a town called st austell about half an hour away from where we lived. And I was an administrative officer, which meant I just did boring admin stuff, basically. Okay, I'm trying to rush through these because we um, have quite a few from Quick. Twitter. Lindsay Stripped. I'm confused about no poo. I've washed my hair with just water for a couple of weeks. Should I try and extend the amount of time between water washes or does water only, only washing count as no poo? So I'll field this one, thank you. Basically, if you're new to no poo, it can take a long time and doing water only, jumping into water only to begin with can work wonders if you have drier hair or a certain type of hair, but a lot of people say it will not work for you and you need to find other no poo methods. Again, I feel like I'm selling my ebook, but I have got an entire chapter in my ebook dedicated to every no poo method and how to do it and my experience with it, what I personally do. And I also have a whole playlist on my experience with no poo. But I would just recommend you do your research and learn about it. That's what I did. And I just sort of looked into all the different methods that you can do and just try it out because everyone's hair is so different and everyone's needs are so different. Even your water type is different. You might have hard water, which might be a trouble for um, water only. So check if you have hard water. And if you do, water only might be difficult because there's lots of stuff in hard water. But yeah, just do your research and try out different methods. And maybe it's best at the beginning to start with a low poo method so a, a shampoo that doesn't have silicones or parabens and any other nasty chemicals and then sort of space out the time between washes and then your hair won't get as greasy and then move over to making your own shampoos once you've done some research that's my best advice now over to twitter i've been doing some no poo have you yeah gives it some body yeah every other i well not really every other shower i don't wash it which i never used to do yeah it makes it very well, it kind of looks greasy, Texted. to be honest, but it's much easier to... Um, I don't think it looks yeah. greasy. It looks like you've got product in your hair. Um, Rebecca Jones on Twitter. Hi, Maddie and Alex. I love your channels. Thank you. Thank you. My questions are, if you could keep only five possessions each, what would they be? Okay, laptop, camera, <coughs> phone. Ooh, my hard drive. Oh, I don't really know. Uh, pen and paper. So that counts as one thing. Yeah. How are you going to charge all your stuff? It, the, Unlucky. If, if I take my phone, that counts as like the, la, the, the charger with okay. it too. 
well, I'm going to be really interesting and say phone, laptop. Although, really although that. actually, no, not a pen and paper because I could find that somewhere. <coughs> I think that, a, like, you'd have to have an item of clothing, wouldn't you? Although, I don't think that counts, does it? No, I'm not going to go into that. Okay, socks, uh, shoes. No, no. Uh, phone, laptop, Xbox? Some kind of gaming console. have a television then. Does that come bundled? No. Okay, television and car. Three. Oh no, bike! Okay, yeah, scrap oh. the notebook, but oh. bike. Bike, laptop, phone, hard drive, um, camera, 100%, because I could easily, that, that I'd have my life set. I'd have transport, I'd have work, I'd have you know entertainment, I'd have connection to other people, sorted. That's hard when you think about it. Also, would you say traveling together brought you closer together as a couple? 100%. Oh. 100%. If you... Really? Yeah. Oh, shut up. 100%. If you um, go traveling with your partner, you learn so much about each other because we've been together for like six years, but still, you learn more every year that passes. Yeah. And it was a you... real time of growth for both of us. Yeah, you're getting a few arguments. Oh, yes. But you come out the other side. Yeah closer together. Like I really think that because you, you're putting yourself in a situation you've never really been in before, far from home and you know out of your depth and mm. in different countries, you learn so much about each other that you you wouldn't have done before because you hadn't had that experience together before and also it brings you closer because you're sharing all those wonderful memories and times together and I'll always fondly look back at that time and I think forever, for the rest of our lives we'll look back at that time that we went travelling yeah. together, won't we? And we filmed it all. And we filmed it all and it just it it will bring back so many wonderful memories that yeah. oh, I just yeah, we both grew up. I think that we both grew up so much since travel. Mm. So much. Daisy Vaughan, how do you balance work life with real life? What do you find hardest about your work? Cheers, Maddie, you two are the best. Thank you. How do you balance work life with real life? We were also having this conversation today and um, yeah. we were saying how important it is to have a morning routine and a part of your day that you take just for you. So I was saying that I haven't been prioritizing that and I haven't been prioritizing that balance of getting outside, you know, taking time to myself, taking care of myself, meditating, and just doing things that matter to just me and having that time in the day that I'm enjoying my day. It can be very easy to get caught up mm. and I'm a bit of a workaholic. When I get into it, I, I go all out. So I really need to remember to take time for myself and to focus on <clears throat> that balance. And it is a balancing act that is very difficult. Yeah. I think we need a bit of time in the morning. Like I said, you can't, if you come in straight and go on your computer as soon as you wake up, it's kind of, I don't know, your head's a bit scrambled. Head's you, need, scrambled. you need time in the morning and then you need a cutoff point so you're not kind of working on your laptop doing kind of YouTube-y work-related things. Yeah. Also, my phone. Night. Like, I really need to stop being on my phone so much because my work is on yeah. social media. I spend a lot of time just scrolling mindlessly, and I really need to stop that. Yeah. I need to stop taking my phone you, to bed. Yeah, I need to stop that, and you've turned off all your notifications. Yeah, that's what I did today. It's, like, it's really see, funny yeah. that these these questions are coming up because I had this realization today, and I have turned off all the notifications on my phone, and we're not having our phones and laptops in the bedroom anymore, and we're gonna start fresh, and I'm gonna. Really, both of us are going to really focus on taking time to ourselves each day so that we're not driven mad. <laughs> and um, what do you find hardest about your work? Um, I was, we were also discussing this the other day because Adobe, the program that I used to edit, kept on going wrong. And I think mm. the hardest thing about my work is the technical difficulties with computers failing, programs failing, internet failing. That is some one part of that I really don't enjoy. And um, I don't enjoy technical things and I find it just frustrating. And that does wind me up quite a bit. That is the thing that makes me the most angry. <laughs> I'd say a similar thing. Yeah. I think because we're struggling at the moment with like hard drive space and yeah, stuff. Yeah, we need to organise all of that. Yeah, it's getting a pain. And my hard drive still hasn't come in the post. <sighs> Ashley SLS. Hey guys, my question is how you deal with disagreements only if you have. Don't take me wrong, I'm just curious because you look like a lovely couple. Greetings. Well, we've kind of talked about this, but... How Dare every you. right ev well, let me get this straight every single couple has disagreements and yep. it's totally normal you're two individual people so therefore you're not going to agree on everything and we have disagreements and obviously we're oh not boy. we're not going to share that on it's on youtube because it's not you know it's our private life but we do have arguments about things that are important i think the reason that we we deal with them well is because we're both very sympathetic and understanding people and we realize that normally if something's upset if you do something to upset me or i disagree with you in some way 
I, if I get to the bottom of it and I talk to you, it's normal. It's never coming from a bad place, and we're both good people, so we can resolve it, and we both mm -hmm. essentially have the same values and morals, and we want to go in the same direction. So it always gets solved somehow. I'm always we're always willing to fix it somehow, and um, I think that's how we overcome our disagreements. And I think should we have a disagreement, and I fundamentally just felt that we didn't get each other then that would be obviously a problem but that never really happens we always at the no. end of it understand and agree on kind of the resolution of it i don't know yeah, if i'm much. explaining myself very well i know what you mean but that's because i'm here yeah what you said yeah um, uh, an important part is to just it's to not leave it and to talk about it yeah. like if you let it sort of simmer under the surface it's gonna explode i would love to do more videos about relationship advice because i think it's Something that people we don't are talk the about much. Perfect couple. We really aren't, and like it's something I think that is important to talk about because people don't talk about it a lot, or they do, but it's it's it can be really difficult when you're in a relationship or you're single or whatever to understand. And when you look at other couples and you see them online, yeah, and you, you just see think stuff online and you yeah, you think nothing ever goes wrong. No, um, yeah. And behind the scenes, there's lots of things that every couple's dealing with in their relationship to yeah. do with life, and that's normal. And um, yeah, we, we are not perfect by any means. We're learning as we go along, trust me. <laughs> um, and Nessa LSR, I think that's how you say it. Which Harry Potter book is your favorite? My favorite's the fourth book, Goblet of Fire. Well, um, I think probably, I've, I've always liked Goblet of Fire. Or I like, yeah, that one or the Deathly Hallows. Okay. Cause everything gets wrapped up neatly. Snapchat, really fast. What are each other's best and worst, most irritating traits? Sorry, really stirring the pot here, haha. <laughs> Right, your best trait is how funny you are, and your worst trait is how um, how <laughs> late you are all the time, and you always make me wait. Uh, your best trait of, this is hard, because you're not funny, or like. Are you joking? Of course I'm fu What? Your best trait is. I, is, this, is this a joke? It must be. Come on. Yeah, but that's not your best trait. Your best trait is, you're always, you're so optimistic, and you're a go-getter mm. and there's never a dull moment if that makes sense yeah. worst trait there's like so many in my head that i can't there's so many trying oh. to come out through my mouth that i can't he can't think of anything because he loves me so much i can think of loads go on then Nick, help me the fact that i have i i get emotional oh that's quite annoying i get i'm very sensitive yeah you're quite sensitive right yeah yeah, that's it. What recommend, okay, this is from, oh, it's Brit. What recommendations do you have for someone who hates their job? I can't leave because I need to work, but also committed my set to year, but the company failed to mention that they were understaffed. It's a very fast paced, negative environment. Would it be unprofessional to leave sooner if I found something better? No, you do what you need to do with your life. Too many people live their life for other people and you've got to live your life for you. And if you aren't enjoying it, leave and get out of there and do what you want to do with your life. Go chase your dreams, honestly. That's the best best thing I ever did. Well, if you found another job, then go for it. Yeah. The good cuckoo. Where did you get your circular spice tin from? Amazon. My sister got it for me, but I'm pretty sure you can get it on Amazon. I'll link it below. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're handy. How did you guys meet, and when did you stick? When did you know that he or she's the one to stick around with? Best of luck. We answered when we met yesterday, but how did we know that he or she's the one to stick around with? <coughs> Um, I knew from the beginning that you were great and I didn't want, like, I feel like when you, when you really love somebody and you really get on with them, in that moment you just want to be with them and you see, yeah, I'm happy with this person. And I've never really yeah. questioned that. I didn't really think there was, like, a moment. No. I knew, but, um, That's, I, think... I just knew that we had all the same interests and yeah. the same sense of humour. Why would you ever want anything else? Yeah. And I think a lot of the time there is a bit of a romantic idea, because of, of movies and stuff, there's, like, this moment you think, oh, they're the one, who's the one? And mm. I think that... There are probably lots of ones out there, but if you like somebody and you get on with them, you fall in love with them, then you kind of, and if it works out, then I don't know, you just kind of stick with it. But I don't know if I've answered that properly. Right, last question, because we've run out of space. One wild fruit, one, two, three. Do you miss your doggies and is your flat allowed to have animals? Also, when did Alex decide for himself he wanted to be vegan? Definitely miss my doggies and my cats. We're gonna see them at Christmas time and our flat is not allowed to have animals, but I'm sure the next place we move into we probably will try and find somewhere that would because I want a pet. And that's what we um, answered about the vegan thing. We did. Last I, time. I miss the animals as well. All the and animals, my parents, your parents. Right, I think that's all the questions. And this was a very long video, so it might have been split into two. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed, and we might do one of these during Vlogmas. 
Yeah. So um, we'll probably prompt you to ask us some questions during Vlogmas. Some Christmas themed Christmas questions. themed questions. Question. How will you make it Christmas themed? I said before, like, who's your favourite reindeer? <laughs> okay. Who... Like, what's your favourite Christmas movie? Oh yeah, Christmas movie, Christmas song, okay. Christmas pudding, Christmas mm. meal, Christmas... Okay, shush, <laughs> right, we're gonna go now. Bye guys! Bye. Next one will be Vlogmas. Maybe we should do, I think we should do, give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see a rela another relationship advice video, because we did do another, we did do a relationship advice video way back in Thailand. And I really enjoyed, oh, I, I really enjoyed yeah. giving relationship advice. We're not qualified to do that. But because I, because I feel like, because we're normal people and we have normal disputes and normal problems yeah. and we are young and we've been together for a while, I feel like we would have advice that is relatable because we don't have all the answers, but we also have been through a lot together. So I think it would be a good idea. So if you like that idea, we will do it and we can get your guys relationship specific questions or just if you're single or anything. Um, I'm Alex's first and only girlfriend. And last. <laughs> oh, look, you just proposed to me. No. This video can be a <laughs> surprise engagement. <laughs> right, bye. Bye. <laughs> you literally did. Ooh, ooh.